And here you see we have already the endpoints. We will need this endpoint to, to get access to the data we want to consume here. And if we want to try out a, a, one of the API calls, we just go into the API console. console and here we have all the, the possibilities that are provided by this API um, endpoint um, where we can consume, for example, all the DX score, uh, current D score data from one specific product name, or to get all the products uh, with all the formations provided by Darwinx for this product. For, we can just open this by clicking on it and see that uh, we just have to, to give um, the, the parameter if we want to have all active, all deleted, or all Darwin's. And we can just uh, use a um, paging number for getting uh, like 50 um, Darwin's per page and just go through all the data. Um, we will see it uh, later in our code too. And after that, we just get um, here um, uh, one data set where we see the, the currency, the migration date, the product name, the reset date, short name, and so on. So many informations for every um, product. Mm -hmm. And with this information, we can go to the next step and just consuming specific product data like the candle information and so on. Right, so Paul, what can we do with this information now uh, uh, past this point? Yeah, uh, for example, what we can do is uh, getting all the, the product name data. Uh, sorry, we will just start from this point, sorry. That's okay. Um, okay, what we can do is just to get the data from uh, like the candle data for each product or the DX score uh, data. What we need is just the product name. And in that case, we just get, for example, the current D score for the product. Or any other, any other data available here, yes. Yeah, or any other data you just see here. Um, you can uh, just click um, here, for example, for the experience and just see which parameter parameters are uh, required and how the response will look like. There's a full documentation, as you can see here. There's a description what we will get um, as a result. So if you want to try out anything, you just have to, to get your access token. I just created one for us here to test uh, everything. I will just uh, pick it now and just put it here inside uh, this field. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you can just consume any functionality you want to, to try out. For example, let's take uh, this product. That's okay. Um, we don't we don't have to demonstrate it here. Okay. What we'll just do is go uh, into its implementation in your application. All right. Yeah. That'd okay. Be so um, let's switch back to our application. As you can see here, we have this endpoint information we just uh, took from the API and our access token. By using the initialize button, we just uh, get some information from the from the API. What we've uh, got here is now um, the, the functionality where we just uh, took all the products mm -hmm. and put them into the Darwin selection here in this uh, dropdown. And it will take a little bit because it's uh, so many of them. Here you can see there's all the, the available uh, Darwins that are active. I just um, selected them. So this and went in the background, made a REST API call to forward slash products and yes. downloaded the entire list, which is all, I believe, the parameter query. Absolutely true. Fantastic. So what we can do here is just to select one of them, add them to the selection. Here we have our selection currently. The first three were just default items. Um, as you can see, my one, CBY, it's those two. Mm -hmm. And we can just add or You've delete. got mine in there too, I thank you. Yeah, <laughs> PLF. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's completely free. You can choose any Darwin you like, but for demonstration purpose, it's uh, just three already inside here. If and you contextually, like, actually, what's going on here is you're giving, you're demonstrating how users can create applications of this sort and construct portfolios That's uh, right. in a number of ways. In this case, the most basic way of manually putting things into your portfolio. But as we go along in this tutorial series, we'll uh, create more and way, more ways of dynamically creating such portfolios. Yes, absolutely right. Um, here's another functionality I just want to mention. I just create a button where you can add 10 random item, um, Darwin's 
Um, so uh, it will show later why I um, put it into the, this application. But first of all, we will start with the three um, simple uh, selected Darwins. Mm -hmm. And I will just show the functionality I just implemented here. Here we have a compare Darwins, a build average for a portfolio and show the quotes. Okay. And we have a time frame where we want to uh, get the data from. In that case, uh, I'm sorry, that's the German time because it's a German system here. Um, it's the first uh, January 2019 until the end of uh, that year. Mm -hmm. So by clicking here, get data, we just take for this three Darwins all the, the quotes, the quotes um, or the candle data in that case uh, um, can be consumed by using this type of code forward slash products product. forward slash the Darwin ticker and yes. then forward slash candles. There, there are actually two endpoints: candles and candles followed by a time frame. So, yeah, uh, in this one, you're using just the forward slash candles, is it? The first yes, one? that's right. Brilliant. And uh, by using that um, that API API call, I just get all the the Darwins, and I all started uh, every. Every Darwin selected here starts at the point zero. And um, here you can very easily compare how they would perform in a 12 month period. Uh, mm -hmm. That example, um, if you just show the quotes, which we get by the, by the call, you will get, for example, this kind of picture. Um, as you can see, for example, um, my CBY was at uh, 170 and go, uh, was going up to nearly 200 while um, PLF was nearly at the, at the same level and ended up a little bit below. And it um, doesn't have as many returns as you, I get it. Okay, okay, <laughs> move on. <laughs> yeah. but, just joking, uh, just joking. <laughs> but a very, very uh, interesting feature, or um, I would say a nice picture can be done if we just com uh, combine all our mm -hmm. three data sources here and just put them together and get one um, portfolio and here we get a Excellent. really nice curve and i think it's um this interesting way to just create our own analysis by a portfolio not just comparing uh, each darwin to each other because uh, comparing each other is already very powerful tools available on the website where you can just open two tabs and just see all the details of every Darwin. But building an, an, um, an average on many um, is a little bit more complex. And, um, and the great thing to... here is that what, what you're doing here is demonstrating through this very quick little test application of all the possibilities that open up for um, alpha seekers in the Darwin asset. Yes. if you have uh, the ability to tap into the Darwin API programmatically. Right. Yes. Because here, for instance, in just three use cases where you have compare Darwin's build average and show quotes, you've, you've sorted within uh, very little time and very little code, I imagine, the ability to compare performances to build mm -hmm. portfolios either manually or in this case randomly but as 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 we discussed we'll scale this in future future tutorials where more and more use cases for building intelligently selected portfolios will come into play mm -hmm. and uh, the idea here is that if this simple little application shows anything to the viewer it's that by tapping the darwin api you immediately open up the possibilities of finding alpha in the Darwin data set, much like you would in any other traditional asset class, for which backtesting frameworks and environments have already been in place since many, many years. Yeah. But by releasing the Darwin API and the complementary FTP repository, we now have the, we've now enabled people to build their solutions, be very, very flexible in how they want their solutions to, uh, or what they want their solutions to do for them. Yeah, so absolutely really true. Good. And just imagine we just uh, used two different kinds of um, API calls and we just have all this information from the history where we can go into every detail and just make some rules based on all this information to get into or get out uh, from a trade or a time of period where we invest yeah. or not invest into a, an, an Darwin. And with all these powerful tools, we can create some very, very interesting studies or interesting results that will hopefully bring very powerful um, results to, to our Darwin asset class. 